All right, today is uh, Monday, October the 1st, 2012. Well, we made it past uh, July 26th of 2012, which is the uh, Mayan New Year. So some people believe the end of the world was then. So we made it past there, so that's good. And other people think that it's more in the December realm. So, um, you know, we've made it this far in 2012, so I guess that's a good sign. So in case we make it through 2012, you might like to get in touch with this... Uh, Oh, irreverent, reparated character I've got here on the line today, which is, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Oh, thanks, David. My name's Dave Young, uh, one of the co-founders of ShortcutBlogging.com. Uh, we started this company oh, eight or ten months ago with uh, my business partner, Paul Boomer, and I. We're both Wizard of Ads partners affiliated with Roy Williams and uh, the Wizard of Ads Consulting Group out of Austin. Well, so, uh, yeah, just um, uh, give people kind of an idea of... Um, uh, actually, a lot of people probably listen to this already uh, have some concept of like the Wizard Academy, and maybe they're less acquainted with the Wizard of Ads partners and maybe some of the uh, services that they might look into once they get sure. to a certain point in their business activity. So talk about you know what, what, what it is you guys do and when a person ought to get in touch with someone like you. Sure. Well, Wizard of Ads, uh, of course, uh, is Roy Williams. Uh, uh, an early client gave him that nickname uh, probably back in the early 90s, late 80s. And he started a, an organization called Wizard Academy that he then spun off into a nonprofit. So Wizard Academy is a, a nonprofit organization that's a, a, an unorthodox <laughs> business school. Uh, so they teach communications and, and lots right. of other things. You've, you've been to a lot of those things, David, I know. Yeah, um, I mean, if I'd had a school like that to go to when I was going to school, I might have been uh, more interested in actually gone for a... Uh, you know, some sort of higher education then. Yeah, I, you know, I think Roy's even talk ultimately of, 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 of long term down the road is that Wizard Academy becomes a degree granting institution, awesome. which would be a pretty awesome degree that would to be get. Cool. Um, but interesting. He he also actually before he turned that into a nonprofit, he started um, Wizard of Ads Inc., which is a group of advertising and marketing consultants. And uh, I became one of the very first uh, members of that group back in it was either 2000 or 2001. I think I've been a, a one of his partners now for about 11 years. Cool. And uh, we're a. Uh, uh, crazy bunch of, of advertising and marketing folks that uh, use his unorthodox methods um, and help our clients grow. We, we like to tie our growth to our clients' growth so that if, if we're not making money for them, we're not increasing uh, the fees that they give us. And well, so that's an I've been doing that for about 10 years. I'm sorry. That's an important distinction between you guys and a lot of, a lot of ad, like if you're Yellow Pages, I mean, Please don't buy a Yellow Pages ad. <laughs> if you have a Yellow Page salesman call you up and say, "Ah, oh, we noticed you have a business," all that means is they found your name on a on a roll someplace of a DBA or incorporation or something. And yeah. you know, so set, tell people the difference between like, you know, like I'll, I'll, the, I'll jump on the pile even and say the only conversation you should have with the Yellow Pages rep is to cancel. <laughs> that's so, a good. That, now that's that's you, good advice. Write that down, please. If you've been giving them money for years, then they call you up to renew. Can't. Uh, bold, uh, a bold highlighted listing is about all you need to do. Well, that's true. So, um, so tell anyway, the you, you, yeah. what was your next question, Well, David? tell the difference between like how, you know, like if I took out a, a Yellow Pages ad, how the money flow works on that as opposed to like if I worked with you in a, it's more of a joint venture situation. Talk a little bit about the difference between uh, how the Wizard of Ads model works as opposed to most paid advertising. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't compare us to to like an advertising medium like Yellow Pages. We're we're more like similar to a, an advertising agency for a locally owned owner operated business, and typically an, a, an owner operated business that's not quite big, big enough to be on the radar of even a small local ad agency. All right. And so, uh, or the difference between our business model and an advertising agency model is that an ad agency is going to take fifteen percent of your media spend, mm -hmm. and then they're also going to do your graphic art and and writing and things like that, and they're going to charge you by the hour, and they're going to mark it up, and you know mm -hmm. even if they 
they outsource it to a freelancer. They're going to mark up those services, and and you're going to pay a, a, a bit of a commission on that. And that's how they make their money. And that, that's been the business model for ad agencies for uh, you know decades and decades. Um, we don't do the same things that an ad agency does, but for most of our uh, smaller owner-operated businesses, they won't need an ad agency when we use us. Right. And, and basically what we like to do is focus their efforts uh, and help them spend their money in a more intelligent way. Uh, an ad agency has no vested interest no. in making sure that you are um, spending your money in, in its highest and best use. And that often means that you're not concentrating it enough in, in any given medium. Uh, if, if you go on the old myth of, um, you know, a mixed uh, mixed message, so, so, you know, you want to do so much in TV, so much in radio, radio, so much in, in newspaper and spread it out. Yeah. Uh, we don't typically do that. We'd, we'd rather put all your money in, in uh, you know, put all your eggs in one basket and then figure out how to guard that basket uh, <laughs> well so said. that uh, it, it produces for you uh, better and better uh, in every passing year. So that's uh, because we tie our growth to your growth makes sense to us to, to make sure that we only tell you uh, the highest and best use of your dollars so that, you know, we can we can grow your business by 20, 30 percent a year and our fees go up based on that. Our fees are never a percentage of your your advertising spend. So, yeah, so that's what good... I like to tell people is, you know, the ad agency, if, if they're going to make more money from you next year than they made this year, then they got to get you to spend more money. Right. There you go. And that may not be in your best interest. Mm -hmm. in, in our case, we may say, you know, you, you may want to put more money into more strategic things, uh, better guarantees, uh, put more money into improving the in-store experience that you're offering to your customers. Right. And most people don't consider those to be part of the ad budget, but we do. Yeah, so that's a really good um, distinction. I, I think that you guys ought to be real clear on is that you, uh, you basically... Uh, if I'm one of your clients, as my business grows, your income grows. Whereas normal ad agencies, it's basically whatever salesman can convince me to pay is that's how they grow their. Yeah, their we didn't have a very good year last year, David. And that's we think that's because your your ad budget wasn't big that's enough. Right. So we need we to make your, your ad, ad budget, budget could, bigger. Let's double that and help us buy some, uh, you know, make our Mercedes payments or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then, then we'll make more money because remember we get fifteen percent of your ad budget. We just don't do that. Right. We don't do that. Well, so, you know, just to make sure that, you know, there's not a thousand people calling you uh, tomorrow uh, for your services. What's the I, Roy told me this at one point in time is what the criteria is that uh, he looks at personally for the target amount of growth or um, revenue expansion over a 10 year period or something. I other than know what's the benchmark like if what's the ideal client that comes to you? Where should they be and where should they be able to go? I guess is a good. Uh, a good well. A, a good way to look at that would be to look at the size of the business now. Ideally, you know, maybe doing uh, in a typical Keystone kind of brick and mortar business, um, a million to two million in sales, and being a fairly small part of your your uh, your competitive environment. So if you're if you're doing decent sales now and you're good at what you do, and yet you haven't grown to your full potential in your market, we can help you accelerate that. I mean, here's the dirty little secret, David. If you're good at what you do, whether you're a retailer, let's say you're a jeweler in a market, and um, there's just lots of other dominant jewelers in your market. That's going to be tough. Uh, but you're really good, and you've mm -hmm. got good policies, and you hire well, and and you've got um, you know just good good warranties and things like that, good products, uh, and you're growing without us. You'll probably get to that same point that you would by hiring us well but you we're can do gonna, it faster right we're just going to do it faster yeah, yeah we're, we're going to help you um really get some clarity and focus especially in the in the media and the messaging that you're putting together mm -hmm. um what we like to find are guys uh, business owners that are really really good at what they do um, they're just not so good at marketing Right, and we'll help you with that end and help you take over your market you know uh, the we we even take people through an exercise where we try to figure out exactly where your market share is in your mm. in your particular local market. Cool. Um, and even if you don't think you know that, you probably know more than you do, and we can help you figure that out. And that gives us a target that that tells us, you know, what's possible. And if you're already doing a third of of your category, a third of the business in your market in your category, we can probably only help you with incremental improvements right. because. 
you know, for most businesses, for, for every person that loves you, there's somebody that hates you. So you're never going to have 100% of your market. Uh, a third is really uh, you're you're the big dog in town if you're doing a third of the business in your category. Yeah, so you're looking for people that preferably have like um, uh, a third or less of their marketplace or... Yeah, you know, if, if, if you've got two or three big competitors and you're a little guy trying to do it better than them, um, hey, we'll paint a target on their back because it's easy to steal market share from from oh, those yeah. big guys, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, you said a couple of things that um, a lot of people who uh, are business owners, uh, probably maybe their concepts that they are um, – unaware of uh, the first thing is the time value of money which is most real estate investors i mean there's a difference between making a million dollars in 10 years and making it in a week right sure. it's the same 10 million dollars but you know the time value of that chunk of money is way the value is way higher if you get it in a week than if you get it in 10 years either one is good right but yeah. one of the things that i think i'd, I'd say about the wizard of ads partners you know if you have a business in your it, it, you, even if you're competent to create that income over a 10-year or 20-year period, if you can compress it where you've got a higher time value of your money, if you can compress that into six months to a year, then you're making that for the next 9 to 19 or 20 years, right? That, right. That's a big difference. And the other thing that you, you mentioned just in passing that a lot of people may, um, may be a new term is uh, say what Keystone means for those who that's a new term for. Oh well, that's that's your uh, in retailing uh, a Keystone markup it just means that if if you buy your merchandise for fifty bucks and sell it for a hundred bucks, you're at a hundred percent. That's one keystone. markup, and that's that's considered Keystone. That's yeah. that's your your typical merchant is is buying for one dollar and selling for two. Gotcha. Cool. So that's um, and what's the um. I'm trying to remember what Roy told me is his goal for he he is like a ten year percentage number that he works off of and I other than remember exactly what that was hmm. it was like uh, what he looks for is like a company that looks like it can do um, a four hundred percent up in ten years or something I choose to remember what I'll have to go back and look at my notes do you well you, some... you think about it if you're doing five percent of your market right now. Mm -hmm. And if in 10 years we can we can get you up to you know what the maximum might be, which we would think maybe is 30 percent or a third of the business in the market, um, you know you're looking at 600 percent of yeah that's uh, that's six what you're times. doing now yeah so that's six times over 10 years so that um, yeah so basically what you're looking for is somebody that uh, has the potential of um, expanding rapidly and you know has the a business that will scale that level they just require some assistance in getting her getting her done yeah and and you know i mean the way we look at it is um the way we tie our uh our success to your success is if you're doing um five percent of, of the, the category right now mm. and five years from now you're doing 25 percent we've just taken your company at to a 500 percent of what you were doing when you first met us so if yeah. we're charging you uh, Two thousand a month right now. By the end of that time, uh, you're going to be paying us ten thousand a month or a hundred thousand. Who cares what it yeah, is? We don't because everybody's making more money, right? Yeah, and you don't care, yeah. right? <laughs> so what's um um so if somebody like like say you know somebody's watching this and they think you know that Dave Young he's a pretty smart guy, right? So you've got him fooled. No, I just get uh, oh yeah. So yeah. anyway, so if they you know what's the what's the like the prerequisites or you know what's the budget somebody ought to have when they come talk with you or what's how do they talk how do you how do they talk with you so it you know. I don't want to waste your time. What's the criteria that? Uh, well, again, uh, those businesses that are already doing well, mm -hmm. right? We we we're not uh, we're not lifeguards, you know. We're, if if you're circling the drain yeah, and don't call you, right? <laughs> waving your hand and you've already gone under twice and coming up for air the third time, we, there's probably not much that we or anybody else can do to to. Right. pull you out of that but if you're if you've got it kind of figured out and and you're serving your customers in a really good way and and have built a business that that uh you know is wrapped around good policies and procedures and employees and hiring uh, and, and you found yourself doing a million to two million dollars on your own 
we're probably the, the people that can help you uh, boost that up and, and get your marketing in line. And uh, I hate the term, but, you know, I use it anyway, take you to the next level. <laughs> yeah. I just, I hate that term. I'm not sure why, because it's, it's so vague. Uh, and and uh, anyway, cool. that, that's kind of who we're looking at. If, if, if you're just a startup and you don't have an ad budget, I probably can't help you. I've, I've had clients like that where, you know, you're really just trying to help them figure out what business they're in. And uh, it, I, I don't like it. They end up not uh, sticking around very long because the only money they have that, that should be spent on advertising is being spent on consulting fees. I, right. that's, that's not a good situation either. So you, I mean, you primarily, I mean, if you're working with a business, I mean, the, so, um, I'm guessing up front, there's, you know, some upfront charges just to cover your own cost. And then, uh, over time though, the majority of, uh, income you guys make are, uh, part of the media spend or how does that work? Well, it's just it, what we do, David, is, um, we, we have, a, a little event that we call an uncovery. Oh, okay. So the the first step is uh, get in touch with us. We have a conversation. We we talk about the size of your business, the size of the market, and figure out a few things on the phone, and then um, we suggest a price for an uncovery visit. And, and oh, okay. I, I hate throwing out a price because it, it there are so many factors involved. Because one of the things that we're going to do in this uncovery visit, we're going to come to your market, we're going to sit down for a day with you and your staff. We're going to figure out what kind of business you're in and how you operate mm -hmm. what your what your values are um, you know the the kinds of things and we're looking for for opportunities inside your walls right we're we're looking for ways that we can maybe improve your policies your warranties uh, how okay. you handle customers those kinds of things because that's all part of marketing but we're also evaluating the competitive environment so we'll come to town we'll shop your store with your employees mm. uh, in a secret shopper kind of fashion where yeah, they, so they don't know that, e that we're there everything. and the reason that we're there. Yeah. But we'll also go around and shop all of your key Compet competitors. Right. And that becomes a part of this uncovery um, event. It's it's usually two days. Sometimes it's a little longer. Depends on uh, depends on the business. Depends on the market. Depends on how easy it is to get to it. Depends on the category of your business. Sometimes it's hard to shop competitors um, right. if, if they're not strictly retailers. Um but the price of that uncovery is going to range from between five and ten grand, yeah. based based on all of those factors. Right. You know, if it's really simple well, and there aren't very many competitors, plus your travel, do it, right? That, that that doesn't include your plane tickets and hotel and everything. We right? now that we pick all that up. Oh, okay, all right. So, um, but but we'll you know we'll we'll price it accordingly, and and we'll put a team together. We usually work with two or three uh, consultants on on every account, yeah. uh, and there may be somebody that's involved with the overall strategy, somebody that's involved with copywriting, and somebody that's involved with media buying. Right. And that's typically what we'll do is is we'll bring that entire team to town for that one uncovery price. We'll pick up our own costs for, for travel and hotel and, and okay. all those kinds of things. Um, and and we have that day and we sit down and we, we look at everything and, and what that really does is it generates a lot of questions on our part. We may have some additional questions that we're going to ask you, but we'll leave then and start to figure out exactly where you fit in the competitive environment and what yes. our recommendations are going to be for your strategy. And about a month later, we'll get back together with you for a summary retreat where we uh, tell you everything we, we found out and tell you uh, what we think your opportunities are, where we think we can go with the marketing. Uh, we'll do the research on the media buying. Uh, we'll make recommendations on strategy and, and all of those things at this summary retreat. And that's the point where you say, okay, well, this sounds like a good thing and let's go with it. Uh, or uh, thanks a lot, but I'm not very interested. And uh, we, we go our separate ways. That summary retreat is, is part of the fee of the uncovery. So that fee takes you through both of those events. Cool. Uh, and at, at that summary retreat, we'll also, based on what we find, uh, tell you what our ongoing monthly consulting fee is going to be. Yeah. And it's, it's technically, it's, a, it's a, an annual fee that we let you pay in 12 monthly installments. Gotcha. And one of the suggestions I would make, you know, if you're, if you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, this sounds really interesting, one of the things I'd strongly recommend is find a way to get to Austin and come to one of the first Fridays. Absolutely. Because the the first hour segment, the way the first Fridays are arranged at the Wizard Academy is you've got an hour presentation up front that really goes through a lot of the terminology and sort of the 
uh, I hate to say core values because that sounds really cheesy, but it really is, though. It's the way that people tend to think at the Wizard Academy that is very, very different in the Wizard of Ads business that's very different than what I think of as institutionalized advertising, which is, you know, billboards that Lord knows, you know, there are people running billboards and and radio and television and print and they have no clue where anything comes from or what what's happened they just know at the end of the month some money came in from somewhere yeah uh, you know that ain't the way that uh it works with the the wizard of ads sort of uh methodology and so i'd recommend come to one of those um you know friday you know, take a vacation in Austin for a day or, you know, for God's sake, if you're in Austin, you should be good. I go to every one of them almost <laughs> because the first hour is the same every time. And then the the second hour is a presenter. And a lot of times they, you know, they don't even say who it's going to be, because if they did, there'd be a mass, you know, descent of you know, people on the Wizard Academy because mm -hmm. there have been some you know, some really interesting people there that just show up and speak. And the way you find out who's going to be there is sometimes it's announced and sometimes you just got to show up. And, you know, if you show up, then that, you know, that's probably 90 percent of, of, you know, business is you just got to show up. You got to, you know, show up and do something, anything. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great way to kind of get to know us. Like I said at the beginning, we're a we're a strange group. We're a bit unorthodox. And um, I mean, even even getting all of our partners together, I always describe it as it's, it's like uh, loading a bunch of cats onto the back of a flatbed truck. And, awesome. And it's a cat hay hayride. I can see. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, just to kind of wrap that up, the, the, that annual fee, then uh, we, we divide that into monthly payments at the end of 12 months, we sit down, we have another summary retreat and we sit down and say, okay, well, where have we come from? Where, where, where did we start? Where are we now? If the business has grown 20%, then that annual fee goes up by 20%. We reload and start again for a second year. Cool. Um, but it, it's always based on uh, whether the business is increasing or, or not. And, and we've actually, you know, when, when the economy tanked, uh, a few of us had some clients that um, were, were in categories that took a pretty good hit in 2008. And uh, those people had decisions to make as well. You know, we, we can, mm -hmm. because we said we're in for a penny, in for a pound. Yep. Um, we actually lowered our fee for a few clients that year. Uh, just because they they took a loss, but we also had. I mean, I had some retail clients. Um, I had one client in 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 that awful year that grew twenty percent in 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 the jewelry category. Well, you that's know, a while, big. While their while their competitors difference. were struggling to stay alive. Yeah, that's a big difference between you guys and most ad agencies too, because uh, a normal ad agency basically you get a bill. And the bill is the bill, and the bill goes up whenever they choose for the bill to go up, and you ain't got much say. And you either pay the bill, you got to pay to play. Mm -hmm. And with the Wizard uh, uh, of Ads group is like you say, in for a penny, in for a pound, which means if your income's going up, then we're all clicking our heels and breaking open the champagne and going up together. And if it goes down, then we all make some choices. And in your case, you made some choices to lower your fees because you've got, you know, if you're looking over a ten or twenty or thirty. 30 year time continuum that's different than you know here's my bill pay it or get out you know it's yeah well different. And, and again we up front our contract says uh we're tying our growth to yours and if your revenue goes down in the course of the next 12 months for reasons that you deem uh, didn't have anything to do with us right <laughs> it's that's your funny. decision yep. well, you know we, we've agreed that if 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 your business is down 20 percent and you want us to stay on board our fee goes down 20 percent that's a, I mean, I, I, you know, I say, you know, if you've got a, a business that meets the criteria, um, if uh, like if somebody's in a different city um, and last question about this and then we'll get on to what we're really going to talk about. I'm sure gonna, I'm going to actually roll this up into a, like an introduction to the Wizard of Ads group, whatever. <laughs> and then we'll talk about sh um, your uh, other project here in a minute is um, like, say, for example, if there's somebody like we got a bunch of people that are watch this in Austin. So would. If somebody has an Austin business, would that be rolled over to an Austin Wizard of Ads partner, or would they work with you, or how how does that work? Uh um, well, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting question. One of the things that Roy has told us for a long time is that he never takes local clients. Oh. Right? He, I don't think he's ever had a client based in Austin. Interesting. And I can tell you one of the reasons for that is that he doesn't want 
a local business guy rolling up into the parking lot right. and walking into his office and say, hey, Roy, let's sit down and talk about this last ad you wrote for us. I, I understand doesn't, completely. Doesn't want that to happen. My guess is, I mean, um, we, we do have three or four partners that are based in Austin. Uh, I don't know whether they take on local clients or not. Um, I'm not opposed to having a client in Austin because I live in Tucson. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know, we've kind of. I know they're I mean, not going to come rolling into my office. We, we've sort of uh, moved into, um, I mean, especially over the last uh, 10 years, we've kind of moved into a global economy where, like in our business, probably less than 1% of our total gross comes from Austin clients. And we ship product to 10 countries. Yeah. And so, but, you know, where we're talking about locally owned and operated yeah. businesses, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, well, and we, I have never my, had a client that I didn't have to get on an airplane to go visit. Yeah. I mean, that's my point is that, you know, is that, you know, the uh, we're we're connected so well by transportation and by like, you know, you're where are you right now? You're in uh, Tucson. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm talking to Dave, um, we're chatting this morning over Skype, and I said, well, why don't we get together and do a recording? And we just, you know, decided on the fly that we're going to do this. It's the same way if you're if you're working with Dave on something, then, you know, he's just a Skype call away, you know, based on you setting an appointment, right? If you roll up in his driveway, if you just start Skyping, he might just ignore you, right? That's, sure. the, that's what technology is good for, you know? So um, you can either connect or, you know, uh, disconnect, you know, based on everybody's schedule and what's convenient. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of, one of the things we, we try to make sure we tell clients is we're not signing up to run your business. No. For you. Right. I, I don't want to be involved in every little management decision. You know, it's not my call whether you keep that salesperson or fire them. Right. Um, That's a good you know, point. It might help yeah. you get some clarity on that. Mm hmm. Um, but nah, that's that's not what you hired me to do. It's it's yep. it's more about the highest and best use of your time and money, your available right. resources. We'll help yeah, you with that. Yeah. In fact, I, I I might equate this with hiring a um, you know a chief marketing um, uh, officer, right? Instead, you know, it's not like you know it's not like um, somebody that's like in an incubator where you, they take over your business and run it for you no you still run your business it's just like you've taken on some experts in marketing and they're sure. going to take care of your you know whatever media you're using and your media spins i mean you guys probably have all sorts of deals to get the best prices so you know if you have an option of buying you know 7 day 3 spots on your local radio station you probably get a better deal going through you guys and and you know determining which stations are the best when the time slots are the best and you know that's that's part of the package yeah absolutely and and the, the media buy is is a big part of what we do um, our typical goal there is to help you not waste your money and that's what most people do yeah. um, not intentionally it's just they're, they're trying too many things they're taking the advice of uh, <laughs> sales executives for a radio station or a TV station who only have the best interest of the radio or TV station in right. mind not necessarily their clients even yep. if they believe it's in the client's best interest sometimes the schedules that they put together don't fit the buying cycle of the business right uh, so even even you know an ideal client for us I like to think uh, is also uh, one of those types of businesses that has a long process Product purchase cycle, and most mm -hmm. people don't even take that into account when <laughs> yeah, they I mean, when they you, start to think about marketing. If your cycle is only you know um, the last four weeks of the year for Christmas. That's a different buying cycle than like in our business, which is every day of every week of every yeah. Well, I mean, it's year. it's like uh, the, the difference between a, a restaurant mm -hmm. and uh, a furniture store, or right. or a car dealer, or or a jewelry mm -hmm. business, or a roofing company. You know, I mean, how many times in your life? Are you going to buy a new roof? Right. Versus how many times in your life are you going to have lunch? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, a, a, better, the, a better fit for you guys is lunch because that's a, a, a longer buying cycle. And it's also a, a, a greater frequency in the buying cycle, too. Yeah, uh, but we we typically have uh, the highest impact for those companies that have a really long purchase cycle if they'll stay with it long enough mm. uh, and get oh, out of okay. the cycle of buying their media based on the way a restaurant that serves up lunch specials 
uh, buys media. Uh, it's it's a different strategy if you're right. a roofing company or a jeweler. Or a jeweler, um, yeah. You're I looking mean. for one sale every few years or, or even maybe every decade versus, uh, you know, uh, hey, we've got a lunch special today. It's a, it's a different type of marketing entirely. And cool. what happens is our long-term goal ends up being we want your business to be the first business that pops into people's minds unbidden when the need for your product or service arises in in the heart or mind of the consumer right so really i mean if it came down to it and and i might describe the wizard of ads partners as being um uh mind share specialist to absolutely uh, to, to uh, attract capture and keep mind share because See, the thing is, if, if, you're a, if you're a restaurant and you're my favorite restaurant, uh, I'm still not going to eat there every day. Right. <laughs> right? It's like, I'm going to get tired of that after about a week, and I'm going to try something new. But if you're a, if you're a roofing company um, and, you know, hey, this year I needed to replace my roof, and you do a good job, and it lasts a long time, maybe by the time I retire I'm going to need another new roof, mm-hmm. I'm going to think of you first. Right. But if I don't need a new roof for a couple of years, um, what your marketing goal ought to be is to plant in my mind the idea that you're going to be the first guy I call when it's time when that need does arise. I'm going to I'm going to think of you first. I'm going to feel best about you, and you're going to be the first place uh, I go to to see if you can help me. Cool. Well, so if people'd like to get together with you um, to visit about uh, their marketing projects, uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you for that? Well, you know, if if they go to shortcutblogging.com, my contact information is there, okay, cool. and that's that's what we're going to talk about next. Yeah, so, that's what we 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 we've gone a long. I'm, I'm on Twitter at Dave Young. Yeah. So that's super easy too. Yeah. So, uh, and I can vouch for Dave Young. He's a, he's a good guy, stand up guy. He'll he can help you out. Aw shucks, David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was an unpaid solicit. Anyway, uh, well, we'll wrap this video up and then we'll talk about shortcut blogging for a bit. Okay.